Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. We will take some uh, we'll take some questions for our captains now. Assistant captains can hmm? uh, twelve are excused. Minutes. They're all leaving, John. Just start right here with Ben and then Shane. Trev, mate, if you could just talk about that late, I guess, momentum shift, the energy, especially from Tom today with those huge putts, um, what he's brought to the team and the belief that brings, I guess, going tomorrow. And, and maybe as a follow-up, um, if you had any thought of putting him out early to, to continue that sort of, um, you know, up tempo. Look, today was a great day for our team. We were in a, in a deep hole. We've been fighting our guts out all week. And we've just been trying to stay patient to wait for some putts to go in. And finally, this afternoon, some putts started to fall for us. So, you know, I'm really proud of the guys for staying patient, as tough as what it was when you're playing a team that's that good. And uh, you continuously feel like you're getting a punch in the guts. Uh, but when it comes to Tom Kim, you know, this young kid has burst onto the scene in the last six months. And it has been such a tremendous, he's been such a tremendous gift to our sport. He has an ability to be a global superstar, this, this kid. I know he has the game, we've seen he has the game, but what I've learned about his personality and his heart and what he stands for this week, man, I am a huge fan. And I thought something that was so cool on the final hole today, he's about 240 yards out. He's probably 60 yards behind his opponents. He's over the ball, I look back, I see the who's who of American golf in golf carts behind him. I see Thomas, I see Spieth, I see Finau, I see Homer, I see Morikawa, all of them sitting on carts 15 yards from him. And this kid pures a two iron to 10 feet and makes the putt. Like to me, that's impressive stuff. You know, no matter who, who you're rooting for, that, uh, that made my heart warm right there. So, extremely proud of him today. He went out, he did his job, he earned two points. Uh, and that is fantastic. As far as putting him out earlier, you know, I've been saying this all week, a lot of people have been laughing, but, you know, we have our system and we try and run it. If we're 10 up or 10 down, we run our system and we see what happens. Let's we'll go right here to Shane. Um, first one for Davis. Uh, it seems like as a captain, you're destined to be up four points after Saturday. Uh, and I'm curious, the way you set the lineup today, um, what would be maybe the biggest lesson? Uh, obviously, two very different outcomes at Medina and Hazeltine. Um, what, what do we see on that board that you did with that knowledge? I didn't have to send anybody out. Um, I've been looking forward to this format for three or four weeks, so I didn't have to send anybody out. But, um, you know, we put some, obviously, some guys that are playing really well up front, and then we put some guys that, uh, in the last four matches that we, that we trust. Um, and, but honestly, there was, it was, we didn't want the clock to run out. We, we're having fun. This, in my President's Cup history, this format, this night, is the most fun of the, of the pairings. And, you know, their team did get on a roll, and, you know, Trevor said it last night. We got to make some putts, and today he made some putts. And um, Steve went to the putting green with some players and putted. And you know, hopefully we make them tomorrow. A quick one for Trevor: um, Is there an argument that um, these events are better when there are fewer matches in each pair session, as in it makes it maybe more competitive and gives you more flexibility, uh, or the team? I should say the team with the lower world rankings, more flexibility to strategize and make it sort of a, a better spectacle? We play by the rules that we agreed to when the captain 
takes his job and takes his position. I'm not focused on that right now at all. I will do two over here, James, then Jed. Uh, right here, Trevor. Right here. Hey. Um, I'm wondering, as you're standing there, as Tom is standing over his putt on the 18th green, what is going through your mind there? What are you thinking? I just want him to make it. I want him to make it because I've become such a huge fan of this kid. You know, I met him for the first time in person at the Open this year on the fourth hole at the old course. And immediately he made an impression on me. Like immediately. And we kept in touch since then. And he's just, he's just wired different. And I know how much this week has meant to him. I know how much he wanted to make this team because from that moment that I met him and I gave him my number on that fourth fairway, like he was texting me pretty much every day. <laughs> and he was so desperate to be on this team and uh, I, just, I just wanted him to have that moment. I thought it was so impressive for him this morning. You know, he, he beat the world number one. This kid's 20 years old. So he and his buddy, K.H. Lee, who's a rookie, who got his first point today for our team, which is a big deal, they, they went out there and they beat the world number one and Sam Burns, who is pretty close to being the world number one. And then he steps it up and he beats Shoffley and Cantlay, which, I mean, you look at their record, it's hard to find two players that are a better match than those two guys. So it was a huge day for him, huge day for him. And uh, for him, to give up that 50 or 60 yard advantage and stripe a two iron in there and make that putt, man, that shows some guts. Like I've, I've been in a few moments like that in my career. There's some turmoil going on inside in those moments. You're excited, you're anxious, you're nervous. You got some belief in there. Like there is a lot going on, man. And he pulled it off like, we were damn proud of him. All right, we'll do one to shed right there and then over here. Uh, Davis, can you, uh, can you just maybe talk a little bit about the U.S. mood? Um, uh, three guys that were in here, Jordan, JT, and Xander, used the word pissed off about six or seven times. And uh, just curious, what, uh, what, what were the guys thinking, saying, feeling? Yeah, they were pretty mad. Um, we wanted to win every session, and you know we tied one and lost one today. So that was one part of our plan. So, as I said, this is um, you know one of our best formats, and they're going to come out mad tomorrow. So um, I hope they're mad. You know, I'm um, I'm confident that they will uh, they will channel that into playing tomorrow. And you know we're gonna we'll go have some fun tonight. They're up there eating, enjoying a good meal, and. Um, watching the end of the football games, and they'll get right back at it in the morning. Right, let's go one over here and then to Rex. Uh, uh, Trevor, here. Uh, Trevor, uh, what are your thoughts about Sebastian yesterday and today, uh, how he play and what he gives to the, to the team? Also, what do you expect from him tomorrow playing against the number one in the world? And also, what, what are your thoughts about the international team fans? So Sebastian has been uh, an amazing presence in our locker room, not because he is overconfident or talking too much. It's more the other way. He's very peaceful and very calm. And he's very measured in his responses and clear thinking. So he's been a fantastic asset for us. In a, in a lot of ways, he doesn't act like a rookie. He acts like a veteran. And really in the last two days, you know, I've been saying for a while, we've, we're trying to build something with the international team. We're trying to build from the ground up. 
And in a lot of ways, the last two days, the partnership between Sung Jae Im and Sebastian Munoz shows the growth that our team has. Because years ago, a Korean player and a Colombian player would not be paired together. They barely understand each other. So for those two athletes to go out there and earn a point and a half in the last two days, playing against this kind of competition is really, really impressive. And I'm extremely proud of them. And as far as it goes um, with playing against Scotty Scheffler, he's the world number one. He's the player of the year. He's the master's champion. He won four times this year. Sebastian's going to have to bring his A game. There's no doubt about it. Can't wait to see what happens. All right, we have time for two more. We'll do Rex and then finish with Doug. Trevor, what's the vibe like in the team room this afternoon or tonight when you left versus maybe the first couple of days? We're pretty hungry. It's been a long day. I uh, don't know if you smelt the braai. I'm going to use the South African word. It's a South African evening tonight, Rex. So we specially brought in South African grills. And we, we, we've got some open fires going out on the range. And uh, the boys are hungry, ready to eat. The vibe is the vibe is hopeful. The vibe is hopeful. Today was a big step for a, for a very young and inexperienced team, eight rookies. We have had a lot thrown against us. And we're here competing against the best on their home turf. Today was a, was a good day for us. We will finish with Doug right here. Thank you. One for each. And Trevor, just, just briefly, was it um, part of your plan or system to sit Mito and, and Bez today, or, or was it something about, did something else come up that led to that? We have different options. And unfortunately for those two players, because I have full belief in them, unfortunately for those two players, uh, that was just the way it worked out. They knew the news at about 9 a.m. this morning. I spoke to them both personally before they left the hotel. And just like when I called players to make that they weren't getting picks to be on this team, they handled it like true champions. They understood that we were trying to make our best decisions. And they got out here. They did a little bit of work. And they got out there and supported their team because they knew that we were trying our best to put ourselves in a position to have some kind of chance tomorrow. And, and Davis, just given the way it, it ended with, with big moments, with, with big emotion, with flipping, um, remind you at all of Medina at 12? Back then it was just Poulter. Um, well, a Today more, it was kind of a tandem. A yeah. little more than Poulter. I know that, but that's when we remember. <laughs> but just, just given the emotion, you still got some a four-point. Some still reason a, we remember him, don't we? <laughs> we you but still, yeah. you still got a four-point lead, but it feels like there's, there was just so much like emotion and moment. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, we, I think we both said it. They got, they got some momentum today. They started making some putts, and we're going to have to turn around tomorrow and, and come out hot and try to get the momentum back. So, yeah, it's... Four points is four points. It's been um, a, a big number. I've been four behind before, too. You know, um, we've been four ahead, four behind. We've watched the Solheim Cup be four ahead. So it's a, um, it's a magical number. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we wish you the best of luck tomorrow. To 15.